Here we are at the first obstacle on Green's Break, the uh, big log. I don't like the angles in this thing. Launches itself into the air. Oh my goodness. Something a little bit different going on. I'm standing in front of a new car, not the usual Nissan Navara. We've got one of the brand new 2020 Suzuki Jimny's with us today. Today's video, we're going to do a little bit of a walkthrough of this thing and some first impressions and thoughts on it after I've just spent a few days putting it through, putting it through its paces out the Wadigans. We've certainly uh, taken it through some proper tracks out here. First thing being, why do I have this thing? Did I buy it? Do I own it? No, I don't own it. Um, Lancaster Motor Group, who is a car dealership and they're also a four-wheel drive shop. So they've got a big Ironman dealer there that also have an ARB shop there as well attached to them. They built this thing and they said I want to take it out for the weekend and test it and see what I think of it. So I said, sure, I'd love to. It's only a brand new car. They did it up all there themselves. So they sort of do all your, you know, you can buy new cars off in there. They're a big car dealership and then they've got couple of four-wheel drive shops there so you know they can do up your four-wheel drives buy a car there do it up or take your four-wheel drive to them so they've done this thing up done quite a good job of it now I don't know a massive amount about the specs of this car but it is a so as I said before it's a 2020 model it's only just only brand new car it's only got less than a thousand K's on it I've already given it a fair beating out the bush now this one is a five-speed manual they also come in a four-speed auto it is a 1.5 litre, I think, or 1.4, 1.5 litre petrol. They are solid axle, front and rear, making them quite tough and capable off-road. And it is coil springs all around. All right, let's have a quick walk through of the mods I've done to this thing. I'm just going, <laughs> going off what I can see. So you got nine-man bull bar at the front. I actually quite like the design of this bull bar. It's quite, uh, quite a sleek design. They got a Ironman winch in there, 9,500 pound with synthetic rope. And as, as I said, it's done it by Ironman, so a lot of the stuff is Ironman stuff. Uh, they got the Ironman spotties here, they're the 7 inch LED spotlights and a little LED light bar under there too. There is a little bit of wind today, I tried to find the best spot I could out of the wind, but it's been a little bit tricky, so I'm sorry if there is a little bit of wind noise over the microphone, it's quite a breeze, I'm sort of trying to talk in between the gusts of wind. Underneath here, we got, they've put a couple of Ironman recovery points there and you got a little front bash plate there as well, which would be your radiator bash plate. And then tires on this thing, they got a set of Falcon mud tires. They are, what were they? They are 30, they are 30 um, by 9.5 on a 15 inch rim. So that's a 30, basically a 30 inch tire and 30 inch high, 9.5 wide. Quite a tough, decent off-road tire. They got some uh, steel, dynamic rims on here just some your plain 15 inch black steelies and then the lift is an iron man lift so you got your four coils and your four shocks it looks like it's the gas gas strut kit not the not the foam kit my dad they just spelt falcon wrong it's not falcon, falcon. They, just spelt, they just spelt falcon wrong and then you got your full spare up on the back sits up on the back door here you got a um dirty gear and rubbish bag here too so up on the roof, just got a, a roof rack up there, which is like a, one of those mesh ones. Iron Man roof rack. I don't actually know if that's steel or alloy. I'm thinking that's a steel one. It's quite a good roof bar. It's got the sides on there. You can fit a bit up on there. 
awning, high man awning, which would be a two metre by two and a half metre out. It comes out quite a way. You've got a couple little side lights here as well to uh, shine out if you get to camp and you want to see around you and stuff like that. And then up on top, we've got another LED light bar up the top there, big uh, big strip one across there. So you got you got plenty of light on this thing. They got a few lights on it. And then for communications, you got a Uni Uni Den AT880 um, UHF. I'm guessing this would be a three three uh, three GBI one or a 3.5. Now inside the car here, which you can see, I've already got a little bit muddy. As I said, this car's oh, it's only got seven eight hundred kilometers on it. So for that, um, for the antenna at the back, you got just a Uniden handheld radio on the inside here too, and then everything else is pretty standard. So you got like your four high, four low selector here. As I said, it's a manual. You got a nice touch screen here, which you can hook your iPhone and that up too. It's actually this car's small, very small, but there's quite a lot of room in the front, so two people can fit, can fit very comfortably in the front of this car. Now we open up the back. So, it's only a small car, these are only a short wheelbase car, two door car, not a heap of room in them, but it is a four seater, so you can fold these seats back up, or you can fold them down and get a nice flat area in here, so I've been able to get a bit of storage room in here while, while we are away. Just got like some water, I carried a 20 litre fuel can, because I only got a small fuel tank on these, um, I think it's 40 litre fuel tank, but I've put this in, like it hasn't been a problem, we've still done few days out bush and haven't had to get fuel I'm still on like two-thirds of a tank once I put this back in yesterday but yeah I got like the alley box here I got my camera bag got a couple of drifter bags of like recoveries and for a recovery bag a couple other things got like a food box there clothes bag like still a bit of room in here enough room for one or two people but any more than that you're gonna be struggling now sorry <laughs> sorry the car's so dirty you can't even see things that well it's just caked in mud but I couldn't really clean it, we've just spent a few days out bushing it and this is what it looks like at the end of that. Now I know they've got a couple more mods because they've only just started doing up this car so it's got Torquid branding on it there which you can't see because they're going to put a Torquid exhaust on it, that's still coming. Um, they're going to put some proper side steps on it and they're getting a long range tank for it and a snorkel for it. Just because these are a brand new car, a few of the products are still in development but those are sort of the few things that are coming. Okay, so what do I think of this car? Now, I'll start with diff locks. It doesn't have any diff locks, but it does has, have Suzuki's traction control system, some like all grip. Now, it actually amazed me how well that system works, because from what I've experienced with traction control systems before, especially in Dad's um, MUX, they do very little. And this thing, does quite a lot it makes up for not having diff locks it's obviously not as good as having diff locks but you can get this car and rely on that traction control system to get you plenty of places on the tracks so when I first got in the car the thing it took me a bit to get used to it. the thing that's different with this car is with my Navara which is diesel it has a lot of low down torque and a lot of low down power and you can really idle through idle it through things with this you can't do that. You, you have to hold that bit of momentum. When you get down to that real low idle, idle speed, it'll just stall, it stall, stall itself and the traction control system will do very little. You have to hold that bit of momentum, that bit of speed, to keep that traction control system kick it in and then it'll just like lift wheels and bounce up over obstacles and do an incredible job and keep that bit of momentum so you don't stall it. The clutch is quite uh, quite a bit of getting used to to work, uh, work in this thing. The other thing of this is it's geared quite high. T particularly, I'm assuming that's a lot to do with these bigger tires. So it's first gear low range crawl speed is quite a lot higher than what I'm used to. So that's where that holding that bit of momentum is required as well because you can't really crawl and idle things. Now that's probably the main sort of things you got to learn to work in this car is that working that clutch and that low down idle speed and the fact that it, it can't you can't crawl things. The other thing in this being a short wheelbase it is quite rough so if you're going for a comfortable luxurious car then this is not not the one for you. It is quite rough out on the tracks compared to what I'm used to in a long wheelbase vehicle but 
that's to be expected with a short wheelbase one. Apart from those couple of things, this car is amazing, <laughs> amazing off-road. I had so much fun in it and its capabilities was incredible on the tracks. Being so small, you can squeeze it through all the tight lines, all the tight places you wouldn't normally be able to. We had Shad with us in his Land Cruiser and Dad is in his MUX and this car outdrove both those cars. It was more capable on the tracks than them. As I said before, the traction control system works brilliantly. Like you can just lift wheels and bounce and kick and just it'll get you through just about most things. Not quite as good as lockers. Lockers are going to be your next upgrade but if you buy one of these you don't need to worry about lockers and all those different things to make it capable they're capable as is being solid axle in the front and rear means it's tough like it just bounces up over obstacle bounces across things it doesn't feel like it's gonna break and because it's so light as well you're not putting so much stress on everything in like your ruts and mud and like your rocky hill climbs is where it just goes really well on your bigger rock steps than that is probably where it struggles slightly more particularly because you can't crawl them I ain't going for too long I just want to do a quick video of what are my initial thoughts on it and the mods I've done to it and things like that. We did some good tracks out here. We did, I can't even think what we did now. We did like CPT 80, Drury Lane, Creek Road, Lemon Tree Road, a few others. We did quite a few good tracks out here this weekend. It's kind of my first time proper four wheel driving out the Wadigans. So you're looking for like a super fun off-road vehicle for your smaller trips than that. Definitely recommend bigger trips or if you're going out the desert or something I'm sure you could probably work it out but you're definitely gonna be uh, not gonna have that comfort and you got the issue of like your fuel range and stuff like that so you're gonna have to get a bigger fuel tank carry your jerry cans but for a weekend car tough tracks smaller trips beach runs like just a bit of fun all those like stuff incredible car so the next video coming out will be the start of the series where we took this thing away out the Wadigans of I don't know yet I have to edit the videos but it'll be a two or three part um, series from the Wadigans time in this thing so that'll be our next hold on Oh. Uh.